Hi there. Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. I cannot believe that it's January already. Welcome to my weekly live broadcast. I'm live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for about 30 minutes or so. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the U.S. And in tonight's uh, live broadcast, I'm going to do a project with you from start to finish. Here's a quick little sneak peek. If it'll focus, it's a little uh, Dove Promise Trio treat box. So there's three little Dove Promises in there. Um, I was doing some measurements at the very last minute, so hopefully we can wing it tonight for the insert. Um, but you always know that I fix it by the time it goes live on my blog post. So welcome. I'm going to say hi to folks for a little bit and we'll jump into a couple of things. Hi, Stacy and Debbie, Danette. Joanne, I saw Jacobina from Iceland was on early. Barbara, Linda, Phyllis, I'm all bouncing all over the place. Welcome to both my YouTube and Facebook audience and those watching the replay. But you are watching live at the moment <laughs> if you see the little live, if you're on Facebook and you see the live box in the upper corner and on YouTube, you can tell if it's live too. Hi Mulan, Debbie, Leah. Welcome. You guys are loving the new mini catalog and celebration that kicked off yesterday and celebration will be from, let's see, yesterday through uh, February 28th. What's great about celebration is you get sort of rewarded for purchases of $50 or $100 during celebration. There's sort of three different ways to earn good stuff during celebration. It's my favorite time of the Stampin' Up! year. Purchases of $50, you get to pick a free level one item. There's stamp sets or papers. And then purchases of 100, there's two level two items. There's a wonderful stamp set and a stamp set and designer series paper bundle. And we're actually gonna be using the paper from that level two bundle, trying to get it to focus again. It's trying to focus on my face. But that strawberry paper, it's the very delightful designer series paper. Let's see, let me tell you about my host code for January. I cannot believe that it is January, but it is BPDNWZPH. No numbers in that host code this month. You can always find my host code on the right-hand side of my blog at thepaperpixie.com. Please use the host code on your orders with me under $150. If your order is $150 or more, don't use the host code. But anybody who places an order of $75 or more with me this month will receive the foam adhesive sheets. These are great for our alphabet dies and you can trim. Uh, it's really a whole sheet of dimensional without the little die cut. So you can trim it for any type of um, paper piece that you want to add a little bit of dimension to. So I love those. That I believe is an $8 value. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail, and I would be happy to drop some catalogs in the mail to you. So let's see. I think other than that, I was going to have show and tell and I completely forgot. Actually, I can grab, I'm going to grab one piece of artwork from Lily. The kids have been painting. Totally forgot. I always try to do some show and tell with you from the kids. So let me flip the camera. Um, so this is Lily's piece of artwork, her Bapa. So John Ferlito, if you're watching on Facebook, that is my dad. He joins us every uh, weekly live broadcast. He gave Lily an acrylic painting kit. So this is her, it's a Halloween <laughs> piece of artwork, lots of layers. And the um, tombstone says, rest in peace, paint canvas. Anyways, I haven't read the story, but she's written a whole story on the back, which is kind of fun. So that's Lily's artwork. And then Nolan had some fun with acrylic paints as well. So Lily officially went back, well, not back to school today. She's back in virtual school again, but these are Nolan's. 
he's been having fun with paint. Got a little heavy with the paint on this one, but we had fun doing that. They've, Lily's got a little paint easel that she's been painting on, so lots of fun. This is the box we're making tonight, and I'm probably going to tweak this on the fly because I think you can see that the lid is popping up here. Um, I want to give a shout out to fellow friend and peer or team member Candy Ford. She gave me this most adorable treat box at one of our demonstrator events, on stage events, and it had this little divider and three Dove chocolates, and obviously I ate the chocolates, but <laughs> um, I have had this in my project drawer for a while. I've wanted to pixify it, and I just love the combination of the Very Delightful Designer Series paper, and then this is the... I have to write it down because I'm still trying to get to know the products. The Sweet Strawberry Bundle and this oval is from the oval, double oval punch, okay? But as you can see, the lid is not staying closed, so we're going to just wing it and I'm going to change it as we go. This project will post to my blog on Friday's blog post. You'll get all the... Um, supplies that I use, I have a supplies list, the measurements, a template for reference, all that good stuff that we'll post to my blog on Friday. If you don't want to miss a thing at thepaperpixie.com, you can subscribe to receive blog updates via email, and that's simply by just going to thepaperpixie.com slash subscribe, and then you'll get an email each time I publish a new post so you don't miss anything. Um, all right, let's jump into it. I think that was it. <laughs> I am already going to Hmm, we're going to go with what I have for this one, but I may tweak the measurements for Friday's blog post. All right, so we're going to start with this beautiful poppy parade color. This piece is cut to four and five eighths by, don't kill me, four and one thirty second, which is one, not even a tick mark. It's like a hair past four inches. And I did that originally because... Let me show you on a sample here. I always like to try to explain the method to my madness. Can you kind of see how that is angling that lid here on the right side? Because the base and the lid are the same size, but obviously this one is staying closed, whereas this one is not. So my best advice is just to go a little bit past four inches, okay? But we're just gonna go with it for tonight. Um, we are going to start on the four and five eighths inch side. This is the longer side. Straighten myself up here really quickly. And let me make sure that I can see comments a little bit. All right, so on the four and five eighths inch side, we're gonna score this at just half of an inch from either side. So half an inch, then rotate at 180, half an inch again, okay? And then we're going to come back to the short side. It doesn't really matter whether you rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise. And we're going to score this at half an inch. Then one and three quarters. I have so many numbers written down. Two and one quarter. And then because I made this just past four inches, I'm going to rotate this 180 and then score it at half of an inch. Now here's a little trick, this little section here. So when I rotated it, let me grab a pencil. I'm gonna use a pen because we're gonna cover this with DSP. I'm just gonna make a little mark. That's letting me know that this section here is just a little bit bigger, okay? That's, the, that's where we want to glue down our designer series paper. So it's okay that I marked that up with pen because you won't even see it. And then we're gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines. This is such a cute little box to have a stash of, um, just to give to people just because. I love that sentiment, that was so sweet of you. Thank your UPS driver, your mail carrier, the cashier at the grocery store. All right, there we go. Let me bring in the template here. Now we're going to be cutting these tabs a little bit strange, but there's a reason for that, just the way that it fits into the box. So I've got my little X mark here. I'm going to have that sort of at the top. Okay, so this is our top lid. I'm going to come up. We've got this in landscape. I'm going to cut up the vertical score lines, stopping at that first horizontal score line. Okay, and I'm just going to cut right down the middle of that score line. 
Okay, then we're gonna rotate it. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. We'll come in and do all the notching at the same time. Then, because this is the side that has, this is gonna be our lid, I'm gonna come in, the lid here is on the right section. I'm gonna come into the second vertical score line and cut up that. I'm gonna kind of rotate, do the same thing. Now the second vertical score line from the left. And that is just because we want these tabs to be going in just the opposite direction from the bottom tabs. So you kind of have to cut in first. Okay, again, this is the top. And then I'm just gonna come in and cut in this direction, right up that score line. So we have our tabs here going in the same kind of opposite directions. And then if you need to, you can just flip it over. It's easier for me to cut it since I'm right-handed this way. So now we've got these two tabs here and then these tabs here. Okay, now what we do with all of our tabs, we come in and miter them or notch them out. I just like to fold the big pieces of paper out of the way, come in and notch. Officially, I'm officially back to uh, my day job today since, what was I, my last day at work <laughs> before holiday vacation was December 18th, so it's hard to get back to work after such a long vacation, isn't it? All right, so then I'm just basically moving cardstock out of the way to isolate these little tabs, and they're little half-inch squares, so they're tiny. But because they're tiny, this notching really helps keep kind of the edges out of the way. And then I'll just kind of fold this whole thing out of the way here and notch. I'll show you some pictures from the catalog so you can see what we're using tonight. And at the end, I will do, I will announce our prize patrol winners and then share with you what prize patrol is for next week or for this week that I'll choose next week. All right, so now we've got that. It looks a little silly this way, but this is our base that has the two tabs that are going to fold in. And our lid is the one that just has, sorry, four tabs because I can't count. And these are the two tabs. Now, before we put this box together, I want to adhere my designer series paper. Now, if you remember, I cut this panel just a little bit bigger so that this lid would fit over the base. So I did a similar thing with this very delightful designer series paper. And I wanna show you what this looks like. Um, on page 14 of the Celebration brochure, this is a free with $100 purchase. You get both the paper and this really cute stamp set that goes and coordinates really nicely with the sweet strawberry bundle. And this paper is just, I showed it on my sneak peek, but um, look at this. I love this checkered pattern. I think that that's shaded spruce and granny apple green. Lots of fun patterns. I'm gonna show you this again really quick. I'm um, expecting some fun swatch books from Brian King, so that's what you're probably used to me flipping through. We've got blackberries and raspberries and blueberries. Lots of fun patterns here strawberry pattern which we're using tonight and look at this back side our strawberry seeds and then these awesome leaf patterns with raspberries on the back so that is what you get it's 12 sheets of double-sided designer series paper 12 by 12 inch and that comes paired with that berry delightful or the berry blessings stamp set all right so this piece measures and i didn't even write it down did i three and a half by one and just past one and an eighth. So again, just a hair past one and an eighth. It's okay if you cut it to one and an eighth. You're not gonna notice it that much by the naked eye. So I'm gonna grab some liquid glue. Easier to glue this down now before we put it the box together. It's hard to put glue on the back side of our designer series paper, isn't it? I love all of the sides of paper, so it's hard to do. Now, if you had a directional paper, you want this cut in landscape, and you want the top to bottom to go facing this little half inch section. Um, it just makes a difference when the box closes. Okay, 
I love that pop against the poppy parade. Now we're going to just start to glue our tabs together. Okay. I'm going to start just one at a time. I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue. If you prefer tear and tape, you can use that as well. Have I ever worked on bigger projects? I do occasionally. Good question. Um, I try really hard to stick to using um, eight and a half by 11 cardstock because I know that that's the easiest to purchase sort of in bulk. I know that our 12 by 12 cardstock you can only get in color families. Um, so I don't know. I typically, as you can tell, a lot of my projects are smaller, but I love having little things ready to go to give to people. Um, but I do occasionally like the, um, three wick candle, um, from Bath and Body Works. That was one of my bigger boxes and I'm talking while I'm doing this, but I'm lining up that score line with the cut edge to form those box corners. I do love when you ask for project ideas, I do add them to a list that I consider for future projects. So lots of you have requested boxes for the hot chocolate bombs. So I have to get my hands on one of those first before I can come up with a box, but I always like to have the thing that I make the box for. How did I choose the name Paper Pixie? Great question, Kathy. It is my mom's name. So my mom was a fabric crafter um, we sadly lost her to colon cancer 23 years ago, if I'm doing the math right. Um, but I grew up watching her craft and fell in love with paper crafting about almost 11 years ago now and decided to name my business after in tribute to her because she um, helped me kind of catch the crafting bug. So she was the fabric pixie and I'm the paper pixie. <laughs> I do do cards, Deborah. I don't typically do my video tutorials with cards because my cards are typically pretty self-explanatory, but I will, I am thinking about occasionally sprinkling in some fancy folds and things with my tutorials, but I do also, I do share my cards on my blog so you can check them out there. All right. So we've done the base. Okay. We folded all four of those tabs on the inside and then we're going to do the lid here. If you're real particular, you could glue the lid while it's closed over the box, but since we added a little bit of extra there, this should work. I'm hearing the cat getting sick. <laughs> uh, real life here. Oh, good, Nancy. I saw your comment. You have the paper on the way. I'm probably way behind on comments here. <laughs> Thank you. And my mom used to make um, fabric covered um, picture frames, jewelry boxes, tissue boxes. So it was um, like a chipboard and she put quilt, a layer of quilt batting down and then she would glue and wrap um, fabric over it. And then she's the one that taught me how to tie my bows. So she'd always add um, really beautiful grow grain ribbon bows to her projects. All right, so that's the box. Now, because we cut that lid just a little bit bigger, see, now this one's staying closed. <laughs> I'll be making a few before I do my blog post. <laughs> no more rats. So that is good news. The trap has been empty the last visit of the exterminator, so we are good to go. Uh, oh, I love that, Amy. Your mother did the same thing. That's awesome. Well, yeah, we had a whole fabric wall, like I have a paper wall, <laughs> so... All right, so that is the outside of the box. Now, this is what was so funny. I thought I had the measurements of the inside of the box good to go. This one, um, I actually had to kind of trim on the fly. But let me show you. It's just a little insert of Whisper White that's got like three sections for the Dove chocolates. So we're going to wing this. I'm not sure I'm going to have the measurements right, but they will be right on the blog post on Friday, so never fear. So I put a thumb cut in it. I don't, Linda, um, just because it's only a half of an inch, but, and it's still, it's pretty easy to get your fingernail in there to open, but you absolutely could put one if you think it needed it. All right, let's do the inside. This is, like I said, I'm winging it, okay? 
because I thought I had the measurements figured out, but I did not. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with the measurement that I started with, and then we're just gonna trim it down from there. So I'm gonna cut this to one and three sixteenths inch. So that is just one sixteenth less than one and a quarter. And I like to use the measurements here on the right side. That's just so that it will fit within the box. The box is one and a quarter inches in width. So it's just a sixteenth less than that because otherwise it's too snug of a fit. And then I'm gonna cut this to, let's see, whoever my, will I ever make a box for the clear stamp box for a gift? I will consider that, Minerva. I know you've asked me for that before. I will add that to my list, okay? Um, five and three quarters. This isn't gonna be right, but we're going with it. <laughs> All right. So one and three sixteenths by five and three quarters. That's probably gonna change on my blog post. We're gonna score this then at one and a quarter, one and three quarters, two and a quarter. Okay, so that's like half inch sections. I don't have a template for this because it's pretty straightforward. Then three and a half, four, and four and a half. Okay, and I think I know what I'm gonna need to trim off is the edges <laughs> because they're gonna be. See, this is what happens. It's a lot of trial and error. And this is how I figure out my projects. I, as Brian King says and Lydia Fiedler taught us, create for the trash can. I am gonna come, this was at five. I'm just gonna cut a 16th off of each end which would mean that you need to cut it to oh, five and three eighths. It's probably easier just to cut off a sliver because the scoreboard only goes to eighth of an inches. I'm probably losing many of you tonight, but <laughs> this is to make sure that this is gonna fit inside the box. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm folding on the second and fifth score lines, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six score lines. So second and fifth. So they started off as sort of valley score lines. I'm turning them into mountain folds and I'm gonna burnish. Okay, the second and fifth. And then the rest of them, we're gonna fold the opposite direction. So we're taking the valley score lines and making them into a valley, which is the opposite of what I would normally do but it's just easier than flipping the cardstock um, each time you score. And you'll see we're gonna make like this little zigzag, almost like an accordion fold here. So when we're done, it's gonna look like this. And then I'm just gonna grab some tear and tape. And we want basically these, this center section to stick together. So I'm just gonna run a strip of tear and tape and I did whisper white. I need to change my vocabulary because it's now basic white. This just happens to be whisper white. Oh, the measurements of the scoring, Lena. Um, hang tight for that because I need to change it slightly. But if you did it to five and three quarters, it was at one and a quarter, one and three quarters, two and a quarter, then three and a half, four, four and a half but then we did have to come in and trim off a 16th from either end. So probably easier to trim it off afterwards. But I will have all those measurements on my blog post on Friday. So I've just got tear and tape. I ran it right up to the score line, grabbing my take your pick tool. If you have any tear and tape hanging over the edge, just fold backwards on itself and then we're just basically gluing those together so they look like that, okay? Then cross your fingers that it fits. And it does. Now we need the chocolate to weigh it down. If you wanted to, you could glue this into the box. I've got three Dove Promises here. And I don't know if you've noticed the shape on them, but they got a flat edge and then a curved edge. I just put the flat edges up and down, okay? Close that box and this one's staying together. Hmm. 
All right, let's do some fun stamping to decorate this. This is the easy fun part. I've got a scrap of Poppy Parade. This is the bundle we're using, the sweet strawberry bundle. We're gonna use the sentiment that was so sweet of you. And then the outline of the strawberry and the outline of the strawberry leaves and stem. And then here's the awesome strawberry builder punch. You can get these two bundled together at a 10% discount. It's a $32.25 bundle, but this is on page 44 of the mini catalog. Oh, and I just love this. The, mo the cutest thing about this page are these little three dimensional strawberries. That would actually be pretty cute on this box too. Um, but great fun bundle. It also coordinates with the small bloom punch. I love that. I love when our stamps coordinate with multiple products that you may already have. So I'm going to grab Poppy Parade and I got to look at my, we're going to stamp the strawberry upside down because <laughs> I'm looking at how the punch goes. So Poppy Parade ink, we're doing a little bit of tone on tone here. And then we'll feed that into our punch. Strawberry candies would be really cute in here, Becky. Yes. Great idea. All right, so there's the cute strawberry with just a little bit of texture from that tone on tone stamping. Then I've got a scrap of shaded spruce. And we want to punt to stamp it. I'm looking at the punch again. We want to stamp it this way, right? No, that way. <laughs> this is one of those punches that might be a good idea to create a template if you're wanting to stamp a bunch at once. But I'm gonna put the stem facing to the left and then I can just feed that into the punch. I punch everything upside down so I can see what I'm punching. Unless I'm not punching a stamped image. Don't lose your piece, but look at that. I love that tone on tone. So shaded spruce onto shaded spruce. And then I use my brother P-Touch labeler and I add its options on the labeler. Um, I do the border and I set the size so all the labels are the same width. So like for the larger punches, I set the size to two and a half inch width. I just love that square border. And there's a bunch of different borders you can choose depending on the Brother P-Touch label, labeler you have. So now the sentiment that was so sweet of you in Shaded Spruce. I love the mixture of these fonts together. Really cute. Then I'm coming in with the double oval, double oval, double oval punch. When I'm alone crafting, I do not sit down, Nancy. I used to be a sit down stamper. I used to be. And then when I um, redesigned my craft room, I wanted to have it um, be a standing spot. The only time I do sit down is when I'm coloring. So if I'm coloring with Stampin' Blends, it's just easier for me to color. I think maybe because my eyes are closer to the paper that way. And it's relaxing. So then we're just going to punch that out. And you can save this white one with the scalloped edge or something else. But I am so happy that we have this double oval punch. I think you, some of you may remember we used to have two oval punches, one for each of these. And I have desperately missed them because they're just so great for sentiments. But these two would layer really nicely together. And there's a stamp set that comes bundled with this as well. Oval Occasions, I believe, is what it's called. All right, let me find my pieces and parts. I'm just gonna do liquid glue for the strawberry. And I'm just putting a little bit on the center because some of it hangs over the edge. I'll just pop that off, kind of a little bit of an angle there. And then just a little bit of glue, and you could use a mini glue dot for this too if you prefer. Just a little bit behind the leaves. Double oval, that's right, Norlene. <laughs> She's trying to get me to laugh. 
Ooh, naughty Norlene, that's what I'm gonna call you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, and then dimensionals. Just a pair of dimensionals on the back there. Because I can't resist our rhinestones, we'll add a little rhinestone. Just gonna kind of center that on the top. This is, would be a quick and easy project to make multiples of to have ready to go. Just grab a rhinestone here. I always feel like things need just a little bit of an adhesive embellishment to finish it off. So there we have our, what are we gonna call this? The Sweet Strawberry Bundle. I believe it is the same size, Randy. I've seen comments that it is. I don't still have mine to measure them, but I believe they are. I will say that the scallops on this, let me see if I can catch the light, they're slightly different than the old one, but I think these are the same size. They've just gotten them to fit into one extra large punch. So we're calling this the Sweet Strawberry Dove Promise Trio Box. <laughs> see, I come up <laughs> with the names on the fly, but I think that's what we will call it. It's using the Sweet Strawberry Bundle. We use that beautiful, very delightful designer series paper on the back that again, you can earn for free with a great coordinating stamp set with purchases uh, with a hundred dollar purchase. And that's available through February 28th. So we've got January and February to take advantage of the current celebration. Again, if you would like, if you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like copies of our current catalogs, you can submit your catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. I love how these go together. And I think we're going to do prize patrol. Are there questions coming in? Maybe. I have not made the dimensional strawberries yet, Kathleen, but they should be pretty easy to do. I think you'll want to do one, two, probably four of them, one flat for the base, the other three you would want to score down the middle and fold to do the dimensionals, but I haven't made them yet. It is, I don't believe that it is re, I think that this paper is just exclusive during celebration. So I don't know that there are plans to bring it into an annual catalog for purchase. It is just a free gift with hundred dollar purchase and paired with that stamp set. I haven't, Bonnie, I'm getting the basic white um, paper tomorrow, so I will compare and contrast. I'll probably show you on next week's Facebook Live. Um, but yeah, I just placed an order for that. It just became available yesterday here in the US, um, and so I'm excited to see it. I've heard that it might be a little bit of a brighter white, which I'm excited to see. Um, so next, when they're, I'm gonna hold them up next to each other and just compare and contrast. So, all right, prize patrol winners from last week, drum roll. Congratulations to Tanya Miller. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, or it might be Tanya. And Jessica Gallegos, she just, um, just requested catalogs for me. So congratulations to both of you. Please, uh, you can leave, a, um, leave me a message on my comment form at thepaperpixie.com slash contact. Or you can email me, Jessica, I obviously have your mailing address. Tanya, I don't think I have yours. Um, or you can just send me an email to julie at thepaperpixie.com and I'll get your goodies in the mail. If you remember, it was the in color enamel dots and the in color six by six designer series paper. Um, the prize patrol for this week, two lucky winners, the playing with patterns resin dots and the playing with patterns six by six designer series paper. This is eligible to both my Facebook and YouTube audience. The caveat with my YouTube audience is that you don't wanna leave my hashtag comment in the live chat. You wanna make sure that you leave it in the um, comments below the video. Yes, Deborah, with, if you have a $450 or more order, you can get the, the uh, mini stamp and cut and emboss machine for half off. You cannot do that with the standard machine. Um, but you can with the mini, okay? All right, prize patrol. <laughs> All you have to do is to leave a comment. Hold on, where is it? Hashtag prize patrol. This is for US residents only because I'm a US demonstrator. 
If again, if you're on YouTube, leave your comment in the comments of the video, not the live chat to be entered to win. And Facebook viewers, you know what to do. Just leave hashtag prize patrol. Please remember no spaces. Otherwise your comment will not be eligible to win. Hashtag prize patrol, all one word. And I will choose winners next Wednesday from both my live viewers and my replay watchers. And I will announce winners on next week's Facebook Live. I'm sure you can't see any questions because it's all hashtag prize patrol. Um, but I love this paper. We actually, Stampin' Up! just came out with face masks for demonstrators. And it's this striped pattern. So I'm going to have to show that when I get that in my order. Um, I don't know if they're going to make it available to customers. I think just demonstrators. But the starter kit promotion this month is awesome. I forgot to say the third way to do it. Oh, the GSM on designer series paper. I do not, Patty. Um, not off the top of my head, but I can figure it out or find the information for you. Just shoot me an email at julie at thepaperpixie.com and I'll get you that info unless somebody leaves a comment. Um, but there's a starter kit promotion going on right now. I'm just going to grab this paper really quick. Um, the $99 starter kit, you get to choose $125 worth of product, product of your choice. And in addition, you'll get five packs of exclusive designer series paper. These are color families. So all the color families except for the new uh, 2021 to 2023. But these will not be available until the annual catalog in May. But you can get them for free with the starter kit during celebration. It's a $57.50 additional value. And there are so many perks that come with purchasing the starter kit. I will be doing an opportunity night like I love to do during um, starter kit promotions, but I would love to have you join my team of Paper Pixies and take advantage of all the amazing perks that demonstrators receive, pre-orders, discounts, um, all kinds of good, good stuff. So the new catalogs are on fire. That's right, Tara. <laughs> They're awesome. Um, and I can tell based on the orders that came through yesterday and today. So um Thank you guys so much for joining me live. I'll be live next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time with another new project for you. Um, if you have any special um, project requests, feel free to reach out to me. I'll add it to my list and keep it in consideration for future projects. Um, if you have any questions about the new catalog products, I'll um, be happy to answer them for you. And if you would like catalogs, again, thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. I'd love to be your demonstrator. And thanks for joining me. I will again share this project on my blog on Friday, maybe with some tweaked measurements. I love that sentiment and that paper on there. Um, so that will post to Friday's blog post. If you don't want to miss it, subscribe at thepaperpixie.com slash subscribe, and you'll receive an email when I publish that post. So thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful and blessed week. Happy New Year. I hope you are happy, healthy, and looking forward to hopefully a much better year this year than 2020 was. Um, I'm excited about what the year has to come, and I can't wait to play with new products for you in the next over the next year. So thank you so much for joining me. Take good care. Bye.